been busted for lying. I didn't know that was possible, but here we are. And it all has to stem with what I've been talking about for the last, well, I guess since June, I've been talking about the solar panels here and how I've rearranged them, gotten more efficient. Got two new solar panels, I got a new charge controller, and I bought a new generator. So now I can run my well pump off the solar panels. Prior to that, I was running it off this dual fuel generator. It runs off propane and gasoline. I've showed this many times, but I've kind of put it away. I changed the oil and I've stored it. I got the other generator up there and I'm gonna show you in just a minute, but it's been put away. I don't think I'm gonna need it too much. I would rather have a backup generator just in case. Who knows what could possibly go wrong? I mean, heck, Carolyn's son, or we've got a visitor comes by who needs a generator. We can hook them up. Right now, the camper and the house is hooked up off the solar panels. We ran the air conditioner off the solar panels. But if we had a visitor, I'd just go ahead and run the generator. There would be no reason to put them on the solar panels. That way they could have all the electric they wanted. That way there's no adjustment. If they wanted to run a blow dryer, they could run a blow dryer. Carolyn's son understood that he was going to be here for a while, so he reduced his electric usage. Also, he didn't have a lot of electric. He did buy a TV or get a TV or whatever it was and a PlayStation, and we had that air conditioner. But like I said, we had a visitor, gonna stay overnight, a couple days, we just run the generator. One of the things you gotta think about when you have generators is maintenance. Like I just said, I changed the oil in that. Well, there's a maintenance schedule that I stick to very strictly. Now, when we had the old generator, it burned oil ever since I bought it, but these newer generators that I got here, they don't burn oil at all. So that older generator, it would run out of oil. The low oil indicator light would come on before the 50 hours of maintenance time. So every generator I've owned says you gotta change the oil and clean air filter and just different things. Read the instructions every 50 hours. Well, when I first bought a generator, I bought one of those little meters that tell you how many hours the thing is run. My John Deere lawnmower has one of those meters, but it just came with one. After the first generator, or even after the first use, I realized I didn't need that meter anymore. So when it burned up in a fire, I didn't replace the meter. I know these generators run about 11 hours, roughly, on a gallon of gas. If I use a five gallon jug of gas, that's 55 hours. It's over by five hours, I understand. People are gonna say, no, you gotta do it right at 50 hours. I don't run these that hard. I would imagine when they said 50 hours, they mean that it was running at a, an accelerated rate. These always run at under 25%. Now, when I was running the dual fuel, the propane tank lasted 30 hours, and I was running it a little harder. So I went ahead and changed the oil on the propane. When I was running off propane, running the well, every 30 hours. So when the tank went empty, I changed the oil. When that five gallon jug goes empty, I changed the oil. Now, occasionally I make a mistake and I have to use that gas like in the lawnmower or something. So I go ahead and change the oil when it's out of gas anyways, because there's no way for me to track the time. I'd rather change the oil too soon than too late. And it only uses, I don't know, a quarter of a quart. It doesn't use much oil. Yeah, and this one doesn't burn. I like this generator. It's not very powerful. It's 1500 watts and I'm not even sure it produces 1500 watts. But that's okay, all I need it to do is run the battery chargers. If I need anything stronger, I got that dual fuel. And the way I see it is the dual fuel actually use more gasoline than this one. This one just sips gas. It holds an eighth of a tank, eighth of a gallon, I'm sorry. It holds an eighth of a gallon. I got a comment the other day stating that I needed a meter or, or something to that effect. It wasn't a rude one, but should get a meter or do I just guesstimate on it? No, it's a mathematical equation. Now I do recognize Guesstimation. I'm not guessing. I know that I'm either changing it a little early or a little late. Regardless, it's a mathematical equation. It's just not that hard to figure out. But I don't have to run it very much anymore. I haven't ran this hardly at all. And this winter, I'm going to get another battery. We're right at that point where we're using enough energy with that new freezer that the, the batteries are at 12.3 volts when I get up in the morning, which is minimum. You don't want to get below 12.3 volts. Now, the thing is, it could probably go another four or five hours because it'll be at 12.4 volts and the freezer will kick on several times at 12.4 volts and then drop down to 12.3 and it kicks on several more times. So it doesn't just, you know, drop tick, 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 tick. It 
with the amount of electric we use, it could last four hours for every point volt, point one volts. When it gets cold, you start to lose voltage. The batter, all batteries become less efficient. All of them. Now, I'm going to talk about a controversial subject in this video, and I'm going to get yelled at, but I have proof. I have absolute proof of what I'm saying is correct. Now, there are a lot of preppers out there. And they all seem to think that my channel should wrap around SHTF. Stuff hits the fan. I keep saying no, I'm not a prepper. I don't even consider myself a prepper. I still go to the grocery store. I like going to the grocery store. Could I handle if something went bad? Yeah, I think I could do better than most. Probably most preppers, as a matter of fact. I would imagine I could handle 90% of all situations. But for example, one of the things all preppers talk about is you got to have a bug out bag. Well, I don't know why they call it a bug out bag. Why couldn't you just say it's a walking out bag or leaving the property bag, but it's a bug out bag. So you got to have a bug out bag. You know, we got to have all these fancy names, <laughs> goofy names, bug out bag. When I was in the Navy, we had uh, bug juice. Everybody called it bug juice. It was just Kool-Aid is what it was. But I don't know. Why you got to have these stupid names? So you have a bug out. Oh, I don't have a bug out bag. If I had to leave this place, well, I'd load up some canned food and, uh, you know, maybe take a firearm and some blankets, you know, who knows? Oh, no, you got to be able to walk out of there in one minute's time. What? If a tornado's coming, what I really need to do is take shelter. Find shelter. Well, okay, we'll go to the uh, little shelter down the road. Or if flooding event is going to occur, I'm probably safer here. That's one of the things they talk about is flooding. Got to gotta get out of there when it's flooding. And then I heard, if the Chinese are coming, well, if the Chinese are coming, I'm, I'm done anyways. What am I going to do, outrun an entire army? I, I don't get these people. I'm just going to live happy is what I'm going to do. But I had a prepper tell me that I was mistaking on batteries. I use lead-acid batteries. Now, I've got eight of them. Even though you're not supposed to, I bought them at different times. You're supposed to buy all eight batteries at the same time and then replace them all at the same time. Well, I, I don't do that. What I did was I, I bought a couple and realized, oh, that's not enough, and bought a couple more, and oops, that's not enough, and bought a couple more, and finally I got to a point where I'm like, ah, I'm to a, where I need them. What it is is the batteries will age over time, so they won't store as well, let's say at a year, compared to new. So when you hook up your new battery, that old battery is taking a little bit of energy from the new battery so now both batteries are kind of equalized out so you're not getting the new battery as efficient as it could be but it doesn't really matter because I don't really tear up my batteries anyways I've said uh, before what I've always said is I never allow my batteries to go below 12.3 volts I've seen RVers who didn't know this rule about the 12.3 volts that's 50 percent and they would watch TV until the battery goes dead and they never change their battery. I think the worst thing that can happen to a battery is it sit around and not do anything. When we were nomads, we had this guy parked next to us and his battery was shot. And I knew it was shot. And I came out there and I said, uh, I'm thinking that battery's shot. And he said, well, I just bought it last year. And I said, did you have it on the trickle charger through your off season? Oh no. Well, I just sat there all winter or all summer or whatever it was. And he didn't use it and it went bad. Batteries need to go above 13.3 volts lead acid batteries or 13.6 volts I think it is every day so you got to get it charged up to at least 13.6 volts and then back down even your car battery should do that our truck battery really struggles now I haven't replaced it in years and it is in bad shape I recognize that but I'm not too worried about it the only time it really acts up is in the winter time so I just grab the battery charger and a generator I charge it up before we leave and then I take the generator and battery charger with me. That way, if I'm out somewhere and it dies, I can still get the truck started. I don't even need jumper cables. I don't need anybody to help. I can just do it that way. So I'm not going to replace that battery unless it just won't work anymore. But that only happens when the temperature gets down to like, I don't know, in the teens. These batteries up here, I've, we've had them for three years. Well, not all of them. Some of them we bought maybe, I think last year was last year I bought batteries. Uh, maybe before that but they're different age groups but the first battery we own is still in there chugging along great you got to maintain them and when i say maintain them it's simple just get them above that 13.6 volts every day 
And I think that's what a lot of off-gridders and nomads have a problem with, is with lead-acid batteries, is if it's a cloudy day, they play lazy. I see nomads play lazy all the time. Oh, it's cloudy. I don't have any sun coming through the trees, so I'm just going to let it run on batteries, and then they let it drop and drop and drop. So now they've done two things. They let it get below 50%, and they didn't get above 13.6 volts one day. So then they harden their battery and they're like, no, no, got to have lithium ion batteries. They're, they're superior in every fashion. So I had this prepper tell me that lithium ion is the only way to go if, for SHTF. Uh, I mean, I thought about it for a half a second. Uh, no. Uh -uh. <laughs> because one, once a lithium ion battery goes bad, it's done. There's nothing you can do to fix it. Whereas with lead acid batteries, you can actually repair them a little bit. I have done it. I'm not going to show you how to do it. If you want to know how to do it, go to an extra, actual mechanic who does it because there's a lot of safety issues with it, and I'm sure I violate all of them. So I don't want to pass that information on. So if you want to look how to repair a lead acid battery, there's videos out there. So even if you had to repair all your batteries, say in five years, well, then they would last another five years, assuming that gets you 10 years. The other thing is, is in an SHTF, you could go out to abandoned cars and start picking up lead acid batteries. Granted, they're not RV batteries, and they wouldn't work near as well, but they are still batteries. They could at least help. And if you found enough of them, you could wire up, you know, a million of them. Again, they don't want to sit around too long, so once SHTF happened, you want to get these batteries relatively quickly. But the biggest thing I have a problem with, well, there's actually two things. One, they catch on fire, you can't put them out. So you can't put them in your house. Uh, at least I won't. I was told to put them in the shed. Well, if you put them in the shed, they freeze. So then I was told, well, you need to heat your shed. Well, how much work do I have to put into this? I mean, they complain that lead acid batteries takes too much work because they got to charge them every day. Well, if you put your solar panels in the correct spot or you know, turn on the generator when it's just too cloudy, but if you have to actually try to figure out how to start a wood stove in your shed so you could use lead lithium ion batteries, I, I don't see how that's any less work. Plus, you got to cut all that firewood, which means you got to use fuel to cut the firewood and the work and the sweat. I don't want to use my firewood. Oh, you got plenty of firewood. You got enough to last 15 years. Yeah. So I can stay warm, not batteries. And then I was told I was supposed to build a box around it, put a little heater, space heater in it, which means I got to use more electric. They just seem like a lot of work. At the beginning of this video, I said that I've caught you in a lie. I've been told that lithium ion batteries will last 10 years guaranteed. I bought this last year. It goes on my sawzall. And I use my sawzall to help cut firewood. The reason is, is my firewood, I've told you this in previous videos, we cut too big. And I use my sawzall. It's a pretty quick method. Well, we're getting ready for winter again. Here is August. Next in September, I'll clean up the wood stove. So I pulled out the sawzall to make sure the batteries were charged and everything was working and the blade was still sharp and I bought, I bought two of these now they're 20 volt lithium ion batteries you should be able to see that lithium ion batteries so i'm glad i tested it because it's not working i'm gonna have to replace it I'm glad to test it early enough i can order some more on the bottom of it says you can't uh you, charging temperature so charging from room temperature 10 degrees celsius to 40 degrees celsius so i converted that and so that is 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So 50 degrees. You got to keep these batteries warm at 50 degrees. Heck, the house can even get below 50 degrees sometimes if we're out and about. Let's say we're out shopping or something. We let the wood stove die down. There's no reason for us to run it. So that literally means if I had lithium ion batteries to power my house, I wouldn't be able to charge them until we got the house warmed up. Then uh, 118 degrees. I commented the other day. And he says... I. I think you should get lithium ion batteries. You know, they all say that they think I should get lithium ion batteries. He says, I have lithium ion batteries. I don't use them in the winter. I trade them out for lead acid. And then I put the lithium back in for the summer. So you spend $1,000 on a battery that you can't use through the winter. So you went out and spent some more money to, so you get batteries that do work through the winter. Why not just use the batteries that do work through the winter and the summer? Look, I know there are folks out there who really like these. If you have a shed, that you can keep the house warm, yeah, I would imagine they're, they're great. I won't put them inside the house because they're risk of fire. Lead acid batteries, they can blow up, but you're not going to burn your house down. If you got them in the garage and nobody's in the garage and they happen to blow up, well, they're not going to kill you. Lithium ion will tear up your whole house. 
the thing I w want to consider is during an SHTF, that's what this guy was talking about, is you may not have heat. You may have to live in the cold. It's SHTF, no air conditioning, no heat. I mean, if you got a wood stove like we do, then you might make it, but there's a chance you won't have heat. So you have blankets. You're also not gonna have any electric because your batteries are too cold. When you have to do this much work to maintain a battery that is supposed to be maintenance free, I mean, that's what I always hear. All these things are great. And all I hear when they say they're great is more work. I didn't come out here for more work. I came out here for less work, less stress. And lead acid batteries provide me less work, less stress. So if you'll click this up next box, take it to a video where I was talking about a tree trimmer dropped the branches of the tree onto our tiny house. So I hope I can inspire you to think smart when you're living your dreams. Thanks for watching.